displaying data and on get async in the previous tutorial we created a form to save the data to our database this is the form that we used at that time for saving the records to our database in this tutorial we shall display the data by extracting the records from the database the records to be displayed have to be obtained by running a query through the db context we have to run a query through the db context and obtain the records from the database recall that all communication with the database it takes place through the db context we have discussed this in our previous tutorials already and from the last tutorial recall that we obtained a db context in our index model class we already have our db context in our index model class and we can use that db context to run the select query on the database before we proceed further let us have a look at the index model class for that come to your project this is the project folder in this we have our pages folder and inside our pages folder we have a razor page called index this is the razor page and this is the file cs the c sharp file that contains the index model class double click this file to open the index model class this is the index model class that opens for us index model class we have already worked with this class in the previous tutorial today we will write additional code so that we can obtain the records from the database but let us make a quick review of what we have already done if you recall the previous tutorial we obtained the db context through the constructor in the mode in the manner as i have shown here and this is the bind property this is the bind property public product product this property we used to bring the data from the posted form and public void on post this is where we handled the post request and saved the data to our database now today we have to contain we have to add a collection to this same file to the sorry to the same class that collection will hold the list of items that has to be displayed on our page for that we will need an i list property we will need an i list property to hold the list of items that has to be displayed on the razor page so add an i list as i have shown here i have added this property public i list specialized for product the identifier will be products we will access the collection with the products identifier using system dot collections dot generic this namespace is required for this i list i list is available in this namespace so this will be required so you can see we have added an i list for product this will hold the collection of items that we have to display on our razor page now the question immediate question is how will i list be filled to obtain the records we have to place a request through the db context the request will be placed to the db context this db context will run a select star query on our database and after the query completes the records will be returned to the db context and it will fill our i list this is the scheme that we are going to use but here is a small problem the problem is that if this query happens to be complex or if the database happens to be on a network if it happens to be on a remote network on a busy network in both the cases or in either of these cases this query is expected to take a long time this query may take a long time and the data that we will receive will take some time to reach us so when this happens there is a hazard there is a problem the problem is that our website 
our website will slow down and the performance will degrade. So what I say is that in such cases where you expect a delay of query, any network delay, the code should not be run in synchronous mode. This is not recommended. We should not run in synchronous manner because our website performance will slow down. It will degrade because of this delay that is associated with the remote network or with the complexity of the select query. So what should we do? We will do, we will obtain the I list by an asynchronous operation. We will not use synchronous, we will use the asynchronous operation for obtaining the records from our database. For running an asynchronous operation, we will use async await, we will use the async await pattern to run this query in an asynchronous manner. So let us see how we can add the async await pattern to run this query and obtain our records in asynchronous manner. This is the onget async method that we have added. If you see this products we added this time and after this products we are adding public async void onget async. Instead of onget our method is onget async. And this async keyword, this await keyword and this to list async keyword. These keywords, they are now helping us to run the query in an asynchronous manner. C. Products will be filled await products context dot products dot to list async. This list will be filled in an asynchronous manner. You should examine this code and follow the same practice in your own programs also. This is the correct approach for handling a GET request if the request, if the, pro, if the processing is going to take a long time, in that case you should use the ONGET async method. Since we have already abused the asynchronous mode for ONGET, it is now also an opportunity for us to replace our older ONPOST method. This is the ONPOST method we used earlier. We will replace this method by our on post async. You can see that we have used async await and save changes async to save the record to our database in an asynchronous manner. Async task on post async context dot products dot add product. We are adding the product to our DB set and await context dot save changes async. This is what we have modified and this is again the recommended approach for handling the on post request especially in a case where your database operations they are expected to take a long time. Let me next show the completed index model class. This is the index model class that we have completed so far and this is in fact the final, finally done class for this project. See, this is the index model class and here we obtained the DB context. This was the bind property for saving the data from the post request and this is the on post async that we modified just now and this is the products collection that contains the records from the database. This is the onget async that we wrote just now. So this is the completed code for the index model class. Now come to the razor page, come to the razor page to complete the markup for the display of the data. Complete the razor markup. We have kept it very simple and let me explain how I have done it. This was the form that we used the last time. After this, after this closing tag of the form, we have made space to write h1 tag. This will tell us that our data is being displayed here. Now, this at, this at is a part of the razor syntax. This tells that .NET code is now starting. So after at, we have written for each. This is the for each loop. It runs on the products 
and each time it runs it shows the name property of your product and after that an hr is shown as a separator so this is how we can do it this is one of the easiest ways of displaying the record the data the property but there are other methods also and sometimes they prove better also we will look that look at them in our future tutorials but we will not do them today run the project to see the data that you see the data displayed like this we saved these records and these are now available for display you should run this tutorial on your own also to get a better understanding of the display process thank you